last time on Bloodlines. Our group of heroes began to search other parts of the mansion when they heard screaming coming from upstairs. Upon rushing up to see what was happening, they opened the door to a bedroom that had Zachariah being attacked by a mimic, a creature that had appeared to be a chest at the foot of the bed. Although the party was successful in defeating the mimic, Zachariah lost his life and his arm, the latter of which Mouser decided to keep as a keepsake. Further exploration was brought to a halt when Keith brought Eugenia to confront the party over their dead friend. Just when the party thought Eugenia meant to attack them, the arrow fired from the elf's bow sailed between our heroes, striking a massive skeleton that had formed behind them. Their terrifying foe now looms over them, ready to strike. So this horrific creature roars at the group of you, and as it does, in that moment, you hear this barbaric scream, this visceral roar, as Keith just sort of knocks you all to the side, charges into this massive skeleton, just unleashing his fury at losing his friend, tackles this thing onto this massive bed, and just starts wailing on it with his fists. And Eugenia's like, I can't shoot it if you're in the way. Just get the fuck out of my way. And starts shoving you guys, like, towards the door. Okay. Okay. Is this a is this a battle here? I mean, if you want it to be. You have the option here of just, you know, backing out and just letting these two people handle this encounter, though. I think they got it. They look pretty set. I don't know. What do you guys... Yeah, it's up It's up to you if you want to fight it. I, I, I'm, <sighs> I'm asking because I'm like... Should I rage? Should I get, should I throw a rage in here and start uh, beating some ass or what? Nah, I don't think it's a rage. I think really. you guys are having this conversation like in character while this battle. Yeah, she's, she's pretty bad at. I think <laughs> I think you should just got it. Like, look at him. Brendan is a good person. No, but they've got it. They owe us. This is a transaction. This is how the economy works. You yeah, know? support so. the economy. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan says. Give them back the arm. Yeah, yeah, we give them the arm. That'll probably give them tip more the edge about the success. Just throw know? it into the room. Let's move yeah, on. Yeah, you, you guys go. I... <laughs> All right, fine. Hold, hold, hold on. I'm, this is <laughs> this this arm is solely in Mouser's possession, and I don't think he wants to part with it. He just <laughs> lost his fucking giant skull. He's not going to lose his arm. <laughs> Mouser too. has lost so much. Give him an IOU for the arm. We'll give. Uh, here, here, here! Um, here's some good berries to help. <laughs> Cast good berry and throw it into the Perfect. room, and it's just like scattered ten berries on the ground. All right, so like as you guys are leaving, you just scatter these berries. Eugenia turns and says, "Can you like just close the door on your way out? I prefer closed doors." <laughs> oh my god! All right, do those. Yeah, we close Bye. the door. <laughs> right on. So as you step out. You notice the tops of those statues in the hallway have this, like, large post on the top of them. You can't see it from the bottom floor because they're too tall. But judging from the size of it and the bust that you're carrying with you, it seems like the bust might actually be able to be set upon the top of those statues. Oh, could I put it on there? If you were to navigate your way to the top of the statue, like jump off the railing and somehow get over there, probably. But I potentially do... Oh, you know what? Can I wild? Ooh. Yeah, I can do this. I can switch and become an animal and do this. That or the yeah? animal could do it. <laughs> what animal would you like to become, Faye? A tabaxi. <laughs> A chimpanzee. Oh, that's that's just perfect. So, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure you just take this at will because you're a druid, so... Your group of folks that are with you, that have seen you as this compassionate person, see you transform into this chimpanzee. (laughs) And let's say that your foot is holding on to the bus now as you start swinging uh, magically from railings and you're making your way towards this statue. And when you get down, you realize this pedestal at the top of the statue is perfect for the bus to be set down onto. But you notice there are a few lines on the top of this pedestal that you can't quite decipher. Mouser rolled another wisdom uh, check for being surprised by a person turning into an animal, and he rolled a nine. 
just so you know. I think with a nine, you sort of know <laughs> druids can do this, but you've never seen it happen. Mm -hmm. And somehow this transformation was more terrifying than watching a person get their arm eaten off by a mimic. <laughs> mm -hmm, that was weird. <laughs> yeah. God, that's tongue. So this statue has a pedestal that is going to perfectly fit the bust. The bust will still be undersized, but it seems like it'll slide right down onto it properly. Uh, and it still has these lines on it, though, that seem kind of odd to you. Uh, the best way to describe it is at the base of the pedestal, it has four wavy lines that sort of seem like they're grooved into it, almost carved into it. You're not exactly sure what they represent. And when you put the bus down onto it, you hear this noise. Oh my God. <laughs> oh no. So does it look like we need to get another piece in, another piece? Or is it just like at a wrong, wrong angle or something? It looks like this matches right. There's not gonna be a better fit for it, but maybe something thematic about this doesn't quite match. Ah. And your oh, only real clue is these four wavy lines at the bottom of the base of this pedestal. Okay. Now, could I make it to one of the other statues? Or it. Is yeah, it... you absolutely... Adam, you do this <laughs> You do this every time that you and I do a project. I know exactly what you just did. <laughs> is that like Fuck the it. fifth element type? Uh, yes, that's 100% so, yep. what this is from. Point of inspiration. Can I... <laughs> Can I look at this at the bust? Are there like is there a pattern on this bust? Based on your passive investigation, there's Blow on there's it. no okay. pattern on the bust. You had asked earlier if you could go to a different statue. You absolutely can. Go ahead and roll a d6 and we'll determine which statue you get to. 1. Okay. So, with uh 1, you swing over to a different one, same size, same size of the pedestal, except this one has four straight lines that are horizontal on the top of the pedestal and you see it and you hear a voice whisper wind blows God dang it and in that moment you realize that man moth has wings so he's a creature of the air Ooh. so when you set this bus down you hear <laughs> and it just locks into place like that's where it's always been meant to be and the McElroys all come out and they're like what was that noise nothing <laughs> Does anything magical happen other than the funny sound? Um, you know what? The chandelier, the giant bone chandelier that hangs over the hallway, uh, you notice that it has four lights, four candles that are unlit near its center, and one of them flickers and then comes to life. Oh. All right, I, I get down. <laughs> all right, when you get down, you happen to notice that all four McElroys have gathered, but they've all gone back into the billiard room. Faye, how many wild shapes do you get? I get two, but I can stay a chimpanzee for two hours. <laughs> Heck yeah, we're going to have a chimp buddy. Yeah. Two hours? Just do it. It's going to fuck with everybody else's heads. And I officially need to check the stats on a chimpanzee since we're going to have one here. Yeah, now I have to look up a chimpanzee. Hold on. I think I still have my own... She retains her like mind, but like her physical attributes change, I believe. Yeah, I think all the stats stay the same, but like the mind is her own mm -hmm. yeah everyone gets this tingling sensation really suddenly and it feels almost as though like a month has passed uh but that's not really the case so i guess we'll just keep going we might sound a bit different though don't know why i gotta animorph back or else i'm gonna become a uh a chimpanzee for the rest of my life <laughs> no. yeah i don't stay in the hawk too long so <laughs> all right so right now where you guys are all at i believe everyone is downstairs uh you might be on the second floor looking down i can't quite remember uh but Brendan in chimpanzee form is absolutely on the statue of Man Moth. Uh, and one of the candles on the chandelier that are hidden and would not have been able to be seen unless you were that high has just lit up. There are three other ones that are unlit and there are three other statues. So that is where you are. Did we uh, go through both bedrooms when we were like, there's two bedrooms left. Did we do both bedrooms or just one? There is one bedroom left for you all to go into. Uh, you went into the one that had Zachariah being eaten by the mimic. Ah, uh, yes. You went into the one where you found the black flame candle, which you have acquired but have not yet used. And then you went to the master bedroom where you got the silver dagger, um, but you have not gone into the fourth and final bedroom, which has a closed door still. Uh, should we go into that one? I say we go into the last final bedroom. All right. Let's look at... I'm in notes and everything. <laughs> Yeah, me too. There's five things written down. <laughs> One of which is straggle. <laughs> That's just a drawing of a dick. I don't know what you're talking about. I like I looked I drew lines and everything that oh like Adam gosh. described for us. They're not helpful. Perfect. 
they're not helpful at all because now i'm just looking at it like what the hell did that mean <laughs> yeah those are sitting was, in her desk and i was like what what is this stuff? <laughs> like, did it i was really long? hoping everyone here had not seen fifth element but garrett because one of garrett and i's oldest arguments is whether or not that movie is good because i love it and he despises it it's a good i was going movie. to force him to use his knowledge of fifth element to complete this puzzle <laughs> i agree so, it's very good yeah i wasn't i was it, it it comes up almost i don't know i would say every conversation that we have <laughs> all right so you all go into the fourth and final bedroom uh this one seems actually a bit smaller when you enter it it seems like it's a guest room the bed is still canopied but it looks like a queen so uh clearly this is the poor person's room maybe even the servant's room all all the beds we have are queen size I know, and I feel like a peasant every time I sleep in there. I was going to be like, hang off. <laughs> Ben, don't tell him we sleep in a queen bed. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about height. I will say, like, maybe the rest of you guys didn't feel that way when you saw this queen bed, but I imagine our uh, half-orc barbarian when they saw this bed was just offended. Mm-hmm. Like, we talked about how much of a savage you are. Like, you wear a loincloth that doubles as a hand towel, but when you see this queen bed, you're <laughs> like, ugh, fucking peasants. <laughs> What's happening here? Is there anything other than the bed in this bedroom? Uh, there just seems to be like a nightstand, a lamp that doesn't seem too fancy. It's clearly brushed copper or nickel from Target. Uh, and then at the foot of the bed is yet another chest. This one looks like it's just an ottoman. There's no latch to it or anything like that. So uh, it looks like it's fake leather as well. It's it's definitely not the caliber of chests you've come across already. Get waggle blast it. <laughs> an Eldritch blast. <laughs> All right, it, I it's cheap pleather, you know. What I mean, like it's not going to cost me anything from wrong. <laughs> Listening back while I was editing, I realized there was two things that happened that I should have made you guys roll attacks for, and I just had you roll damage because I thought it was too funny. I will ask you to roll an attack uh, for uh, this one. Nice if I missed it, is static chests. That would be sick. Rolling that one, you know. If you roll on that one, basically you're trying to do finger guns, but before you get out of the holster, you push your thumb down and you shoot yourself. <laughs> oh, in the baby. Foot. What is it? Two plus six. Eight? Is that enough? <laughs> Actually, eight is the AC for this thing. It's Hell stationary. yeah! Uh, you hit it and it like just evaporates <laughs> because it's pleather and it's just super flammable. Uh, and just laying there on the ground uh, is yet another bust. This one was uh, clearly put away. Uh, you're not quite sure why this one was rejected, uh, but it was not set up in any of the other rooms. Uh, and it's about the same size as Man Moth. Give me one second. My mouse just died. I'm going to switch to my backup mouse. Mm-hmm. Speaking of mice, Mouser uh, picks up the bust <laughs> and, he, and he holds it in front of his face, like staring at it, trying to get a <laughs> feeling as to what this creature was like in life. As a half orc, uh, you have been called a lot of things, and, and most of them have not really affected you too much. But, you know, every now and then someone calls you ugly. Uh, and it does hurt. Like earlier, I don't know how you felt when Justonia was calling you ugly, but, you know, it's something what? that you've heard in your life. Uh, but looking into the eyes of this creature, you imagine that they've probably heard it more than you if it were real. Because it's got this really, really heavy brow. Um, and it's something that you've seen in, like, creatures before. And then it's, it seems to be, even though this thing is carved, you know, this is a bust, just covered in hair. But it has these very human-like eyes. Um and, like, you've heard tale of things like these in the mountains, but uh, you never thought that you would be, you know, holding a bust that someone carved specifically to represent the Sasquatch. Oh uh, my and that God. is what you have in your hands. I, I was hoping it was going to be actually Harry in the Hendersons. <laughs> I mean, yeah, his name is oh, obviously it. Harry. It's yeah. labeled on the back of it. It's a deep cut. <laughs> <laughs> the back of this bust just has Harry, Harry. carved into it. <laughs> I, I turn the bust around and say, made in Taiwan. <laughs> I don't know you could read. Great. I can't. <laughs> yeah, you lied. Continuity <laughs> error. You told us you couldn't read on the first but it episode. Does, the joke is it doesn't say that, guys. I I made that up. I made that up. Made in fa- <laughs> Faiwan, is it? What's What are we doing with the fantasy? Yeah, again? yeah, just yeah, putting fantasy. F in front of everything in Faiwan. Brendan does this, like, um, uh, uh, they start gesturing um, as a chimpanzee because Brendan can't speak as a chimpanzee but she makes <laughs> motions that mm. she wants to play monkey in the middle with a bust oh god <laughs> who who wants to play that game is that something that like but we would keep it away from you that's the problem correct 
Correct. You want to be the monkey? Is that? Oh, like, yeah. My goodness. It's always yeah. the worst thing in the world. Because I am the monkey. <laughs> okay. Because she's literally the monkey right now. As a monkey, you'll you'll still notice because you retain a lot of your stats that the lines that uh, Mouser looked at when he said "made in Faiwan," uh, it wasn't actually script at all. Uh, it was actually just three lines that are uh, looking like they're lower and they're flat. Mm. So it's just like it's another element, obviously. I mean, if you can think of an element that Sasquatch would match up with, you know, who knows? Mm. Earth, fire, wind, water, hair. Got it. Hair. Hair. <laughs> J- just to um, remind us, we haven't seen a Sasquatch like body yet, have we? Uh, no, but all the statues that are outside in the hallway, they all just have like the same. Like, imagine like the Oscar statue. Oh, if they yeah. just cut it off at the shoulders and you could like oh, uh-uh. put something on top of it. And mm. to remind you, you actually saw uh, the lines on the statue outside where like you would place the thing down onto. Okay. Is it easy? Would it be easy for Mouser to get up there or should he huck it up to uh, Monkey Brendan? Um, I mean, it's probably going to be an acrobatics or an athletics check for that. And I imagine that the uh, chimpanzee is going to have an easier time climbing up there. Mm, okay. Yeah, he uh, uh, under, under um, you know, I'm sure it feels like a hefty, like a bowling ball kind of thing. He's going to crouch down and old school basketball free throw it up between his legs, you know, <laughs> to uh, Brennan. Yeah, can I? Uh, uh, what? Oh, oh, so we're not close to the outs. Never mind. Okay, I'm, I'll catch it, but... I was hoping it would be like a cool handoff. You know, you like give it to me and then like I like alley you but it I'm onto the statue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. for that, if you want me to set yeah. this up, I will set this up. We'll tag team the shit out of this. I mean, if you're literally trying to alley oop it, that's athletics for sure. Uh, yeah. So let's do a combined check. All right. If you guys can together clear 25, the alley oop works. Mm-hmm. Uh, Faye, please hold your roll. I crit plus six, 26 total. Wow. Faye, no, I'm going to need you to roll anyways, uh, but so you guys will pass one. no matter what. All right. Even if it's a one, you guys are still going to pass. Oh, well, I got a 16 plus nine for the uh, chimpanzee. Damn. Wow. Jesus. Wow. Uh, yeah, like you look at this thing, Mouser, you feel this empathy. You realize sort of like what this creature is. You look over, you see the chimpanzee just like gracefully swinging towards the next statue. Uh, and you just toss it up and she just slams it down. Uh, and you imagine there would be like some sort of noise, except it's just like swoosh. <laughs> it's just super weird. Um, but then right after you hear that, you hear... Uh, Dang it. Damn. Uh, damn. <laughs> what? You didn't check to see which statue you put it on. Oh, uh, yeah. What? I thought dunking would be the fifth element. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like... I feel like Mouser is actually very akin to looking like a Monstar from Space Jam anyway. <laughs> uh, this had low lines. Is that as low? Like, is... is What's low? What's low? Water, f- ground. Uh, water would be wavy lines that are low, uh, since apparently you can't remember uh, flat lines that are no, low. No, 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 no. Ma- Mouser, I, I, I know you're doing this for us, but Mouser is trying to give a dumb answer, so he's trying to like <laughs> process of illumination something. Uh, I don't actually think you could see what the lines that are on the statue, but like just seeing that, you're like, I said, made in five one. So <laughs> <laughs> you're just super confused now. Uh, I guess Brendan will swing to the next couple statues to look for the lines. Okay, I'm not going to draw this out too long. You do eventually find the one that has the the lines that match up. Uh, when you sit it down, you do hear it, and uh, it sounds like it's been successful. And then you see the candle on the chandelier light up. The other thing you notice is as you swung through, uh, there were two other sets of lines. One was uh, wavy and low, and the other one was vertical wavy lines, which just when you saw it, it just reminded you of fire hmm. so i was thinking pig pen from peanuts comics i was thinking a couple of wavy lines from ghostbusters so <laughs> if you can find dr vakeman you'll all be okay i'm sorry this isn't your lucky day all right so we've finished this floor completely right yeah you've gone into all the rooms on the second floor should we check in on eugenia like if they're oh, yeah how's eugenia doing they're like alive uh yeah you can head over there um eugenia is kind of bloodied up but uh, I will say Keith is pretty fucked up. He's bleeding a lot, and he seems to just be hand-to-hand fighting uh, this giant skeleton, uh, which is just laughing while they fight in this really horrid sound that it's making by grinding its bones together. Uh, it seems
seems like they have this thing on its last legs, like all the things, ribs are shattered, its femurs are broken, but it's clearly not sensing any pain because it's just some sort of construct. Uh, and Eugenia looks behind themselves, sees you in the hallway checking on them, and just slams the fucking door shut in your face. Oh. Good work. What's with the doors in this place? You. I guess they don't want our help. Oh, I can't talk. I'm a chimpanzee. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, like... <laughs> now, I think right. you can talk. Just you have to do it in chimpanzee, but everyone can understand you. Like if everyone can understand Chewbacca and R two D two in that fucking movie True. with no one explaining yeah, yeah, why, yeah. they can understand you. So there's no third floor. Correct. Right. That you know of. Oh, is there a basement? Mm. You haven't noticed any sort of stairs that lead from the second floor up or from the first floor down. Are there any other rooms on the first floor we haven't investigated? We've only gone to the lounge and the billiards room on the first floor, right? Aren't there other rooms? Correct. You started in the library. You went to the lounge and then the billiards room. There are three other rooms. One that was across from the library and then the two rooms that are at the back of the building. Uh, Mouser starts stomping off to the one across the library. He's getting itchy. and needs to do something. Needs to fight something. As you enter this, uh, you just see this massive table with large high back chairs, and there's a bunch of finery uh, and cutlery set out. There's uh, no food or anything like that, which, of course, disappoints you. Um, mm. But you have entered the dining room. So uh, are you going in there alone? Are you guys going to split up, or are you guys going to travel together? I'm going to go with Mouser. Same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So everyone, go ahead and roll investigation checks when you enter this room. Hmm. Mouser's strong suit again. Uh, I have a 19. Oh, Ooh. Jesus. 14. 17. 16. Damn, man. You guys brought your fucking A game. All right. So for everyone who rolled over 15, which I believe is everyone but Mouser, mm-hmm. uh, Zara, Brendan, and Waggle, uh, while you're searching, there doesn't seem to be anything special about this room. It sincerely seems to just be a dining room. Uh, there's like a curio with a bunch of finer cutlery because apparently they didn't feel like setting out the good china for you guys. Uh, that's uh, off to one side. There's, you know, a few paintings, but nothing too special. It doesn't look like they're anything magical. Um, and something tells you, like, get down on your hands and knees and check and see if there's anything special about the floor. And when you do that, you don't notice, like, any lifted floorboards, any rugs that seem to be out of place, but you guys all seem to coalesce and look at each other, and in the middle of you is the base of this dining room table. And it is large, uh, and it has a face on it. And in that moment, the three of you realize uh, this is the third statue that you have seen that is serving as the base of the table that the top is sitting on. I really thought this was going to be the one you guys wouldn't find. So, <laughs> uh, so all right. It- it's like carved into like the like the not the legs but just like the base of it like a post kind of like imagine there's a post at the center of this very large table that's mm-hmm. just oversized that like comes out and because the natural shape of a bust would like form as legs essentially like the mm-hmm. shoulders where they cut off uh, that's what's being used to support this table can we see if the center of the table, if there's like a plate, like an opening there? If you crawl towards it, it looks like this has sort of just been crudely balanced on this. And if anyone were to like have sat down at the table and put their elbows down, it probably would have just tipped. Yeah. On his, beneath it, on his hands and knees, Mouser is going to kind of uh, just brace his shoulders and back of his neck up against the tabletop and, and do a, do a burpee. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just for fun, let's roll a strength check. Oh, should I rage for this? <laughs> if you fucking rage for this, I'll die. <laughs> Howard Burpee. 18. Oh, my okay. gosh. Okay. So here's what happens, all right? Uh, everyone goes under there. You all notice this at the same time. You're just like, holy shit, it's the statue. Mouser looks under because he sees you guys all crawling towards it. He realizes what's happening as well. Uh, he does this burpee, just stands straight up, and you just hear all these plates and glasses that were on top of this dining room table just go flying and smashing against the walls as the table just rotates and rotates. Uh, as it flies through the air, you just see the statue sitting there staring at you, and it looks like a face that's been made with fire. Uh, and this is what you all know as an ifrit. Uh, which is a fire elemental. And as you have that realization, like, oh, we have found our fire cryptid, you hear the table smack the ground, and you all look over, and the entire top is cleared. It's actually landed, so the top is on the upward side, but there's something at the center of it. It seems to be a vase that stuck with it through centrifugal force, and on the top of it are a bouquet of black roses. Uh, and I'm going to steal your agency here for a second, Mouser. When you notice that, you scream out, The flowers are still standing! <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. 
God. Yeah, that was a lot of build up for a Ghostbusters reference, but that's, dude, that's this episode's fine. gonna be full of them. We, uh, we, we're like ten minutes in, and that's like our fourth reference <laughs> to Ghostbusters already. I'm happy with this. Right on. So uh, you have uh, cleared the dining room. You have retrieved your third statue, and at this point, uh, Brendan, you do know which uh, statue outside you can place this bust onto if you would like to take care of that now. Uh, I would like to pass it off to Mouser and be like, pass it back to me to do another uh, cool basketball move. Yes, we do the alley-oop again. <laughs> and he's going to athletics and huck it up there. Since you have experience wow. now, we'll just say 20 is to clear it. I have a feeling 23? you destroy yeah. that. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I rolled a I 23. I crit it this time. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to blow in her crits on the dunks. I'm just going to, like, <laughs> dunk it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Here's what happens. The four of you go out into the hallway. You notice that no one else is making as much progress, it seems like, uh, as you are. Mouser, you toss this thing up. Uh, Brendan, you just flip up there you do some backflips as you catch it and you just like set it down gracefully and it just like slides down into place uh, and as it does you hear the success noise you see the new candle light up um but it was just like so smooth uh you just hear like almost like you received a bonus and when that happens uh in that moment waggle you look up at the chandelier and you see one blue light that just sort of falls off and it just hits you in the forehead. For whatever reason, you decide not to move out of the way. And when it does that, you just feel like energized. Like you just got two spell slots back. So. Oh, wow. nice. Wow. This is my way of not putting a like crystal save point before the final boss where you guys can recover yeah, and then save I the game. really needed Because I didn't realize I blew all... I didn't know how uh, Warlocks worked. I blew all of my spell slots on like a, you know... Random NPC. And the so first room on the first, first painting. Yeah, yeah, on the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, ooh, look at all these things I can do. My problem is that I never spend my stuff because I'm like, oh, I'll just I'll blow it all at the very end, and it's like, yeah. uh, it's, I, I have literally stood that. over the corpse of a dragon, like I didn't cast a single fucking spell on this thing. Just so annoyed. Uh, okay, so you guys have completed the dining room. What shall you do next? You're standing in the great hall. You know, I I liked how we smashed all their stuff. By the way, like I don't know. We hate this dude, right? I mean, he's trying to kill us. <laughs> yeah, we can keep smashing stuff. I mean, I blast ooh, the chandelier. Ah, ooh, ooh. I shoot it. <laughs> uh, all right. When you shoot the chandelier, uh, you see that uh, blue wave of energy that you noticed when um, Brandon tried to leave the house that launched her backwards into the room. It sort of shimmers off of that and just scatters up, and you can see that this thing is also part of uh, whatever the house is here. Because uh, it's just uh, sort of like built into the ceiling, so yeah, I think Allstate offers that. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we are farmers. <laughs> yeah, actually, you see J.K. Simmons just backhand your bolt away. <laughs> uh, God, J.K. Not again. Okay. He throws. It's a chair not just at J.K. You. Simmons. It's yeah, it's J.K. Simmons from Whiplash. So you know okay, things okay, are okay, real let's go scary to the now. <laughs> You're flat. You have no talent. <laughs> God, that's an awesome movie. Oh, that hurts Are you more. rushing or dragging? And he slaps you in the face. We're right. rushing. We're getting the hell out of here. Go, go, go. <laughs> All right. So at the back of the hall, there are two more doors. Um, one on the right, one on the left. The one on the right, the door is slightly cracked, but there doesn't seem to be any lights coming from inside. The one on the left, the door is still closed. Let's just open the closed door. Yeah. Yeah. I want to do the closed door. Oh, yeah. 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 Cat. Cat. Go, go forward. Cat. You sn- smell it with your cat smells. Can I do that? <laughs> I mean, can I stick my nose to like the bottom of the door and sniff and see what's in there? Roll a perception check. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, and your bullshit. Wait, wait. <laughs> you asked us to play. <laughs> it's bad. Yeah, we have a cat. We're gonna use the cat. It's a six. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so you you try and like put your face on the ground to like look under it. Um, and you can just see like the bare hint of light coming through. Um, but as you like start to try and make out what's in this room, uh, you see what's just like a little dust bunny, like tiny dust bunny, just like roll out from under the room and you just uncontrollably just start batting at it with your paws and you just get completely <laughs> distracted. So I, after I finish playing with these dust motes, I stand up and stoically turn around and look at everyone and just shrug. <laughs> Smell good, huh? I'm going to say, Mouser, you should just kind of, like, uh, just smash it open. He smashes it open. You still have uh, the tongue of a mimic and the arm of Zachariah, if you would like to use either of those. <laughs> I forgot about his arm. Oh, my God, the arm. 
I'm aware that I had both of those, and I have something in store for him later. But for right now, I mean, yeah, he'll uh, no, I'll say the tongue. But no, he just he just uh, this is Sparta's open the door, just poof, right in the middle of the where the handle's supposed to be. Roll a strength check. He could do that. I hope you roll low to punish you for rolling so high on your athletics checks. My God, I am on fire today. Another 18, dude. Yeah, so you walk up. These are double doors. You know, the doors have been heavy in all the rooms you've gone into so far. You kick it right in the middle. The wood just splinters where it's been latched. It just explodes open. It flies uh, on both hinges, smacks into the wall. And uh, as it's, like, sort of, like, reverberating back, uh, you can see, like, the doors are actually bent from kicking it so fucking hard. The door is now open. As a chimpanzee, I walk up to Mouser, and then I pantomime turning a doorknob <laughs> and opening the door. <laughs> I imagine it's like those videos of the guy showing how stupid all the TikTok videos yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. KB, I think his name is. Yeah, exactly. Um, That's exactly what it's like. So, uh, yeah, as Mouser sees uh, uh, a monkey do this, he's going to very loudly proclaim like yeah well barbarians we do things more efficiently right other barbarian upstairs i bet you kicked your doors all in yeah and i any ways to hear something <laughs> uh in that moment when you say that out loud the lights flicker and there's a crash of lightning outside and you hear noise, and that's it Hmm. Okay. M- Mouser, uh, Mouser uh, reaches back and puts his hand on Brennan the monkey's like back and kind of just goes whoop, like <laughs> throws him forward like let's, let's go into the room. <laughs> All right. Sure. So as you get shoved into this room, uh, you look and you realize that this this room has a just a wall of glass windows. Um, and inside it is just a bunch of different plants. Uh, you could call this a sunroom, but you get the feeling like this is called the conservatory. Uh, and there is no one else in here. There seems to be just sort of dim lights, uh, nothing too harsh, uh, because there is just a room full of vegetation. And you can see that uh, at the center of the room, everything that's in here uh, has a different level of decay. The stuff that's near the outside seems to be about fine and you can tell us because you're a druid but the stuff that seems to be at the center of this room is dead and it looks like it has rotted uh it's not just from like neglect there seems to be of something that has sapped the life from the plants in this room Oof. i feel like that always happens when i get like berries you know from like the supermarket <laughs> like in the center there's always like one evil strawberry you know that's like moldy already yeah. like right in the center it's like i got these two days ago yeah yeah. Uh, side note: Do you guys know about washing your stuff with vinegar and then before you store it? Do you hear about this? No. You guys, you guys hear about no. this thing? It's called washing your fruit with vinegar. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. What? Old man Garrett. I, yeah, Wait, I like turn into Jay Leno. To do that. Is, that, is that real? Is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Like wash it with vinegar and then you rinse it. It's because like you you rinse your fruit before you put it in there, but then it gets moldy before it's in the fridge. If you wash it with, with vinegar, then like rinse pat. For some reason, it like helps it out a little bit. Just check yeah. it out. Should use vinegar in this room. We don't have any, right? Yeah, we have vinegar. <laughs> no, I, I mean in the in the room in the that that, that like our oh, actual in, the, in, in the, the conservatory. Oh, you oh, guys oh, can oh, check oh, oh. Robin's <laughs> fucking monster hunter kit bullshit. I don't have vinegar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was All so right, funny. so what a good disconnect. I, I just kind of step into the the dead part of the room and just kind of see how I feel. Okay. Brendan is is uh is offended by all of this and does not step towards the dead part of the room okay can i sneak around the edge to the back yeah so i can get behind whatever it is okay in the so center? before we do all that uh based off passive perception there is one thing that is noticed and this is noticed by brendan because you have a 16 in passive perception as you enter the room and you're sort of taking the things in you you look back as the rest of the group as you're walking in and you notice something no one else has noticed yet. And that is that the door that was just fucked up from Mouser kicking it in mm-hmm. appears to be back in perfect condition again. Mm. You're not sure when or how, but the doors seem to be not damaged anymore. Is it opened or closed? Still open. It's They're in the same spot they were after you kicked it in. It's like you looked away. When you looked back, all of a sudden the doors were fine again. Uh, Mm -hmm. And you're not quite sure what that means. But uh, now we're going to have a few things. Uh, So Waggle, go ahead and roll an Arcana. 
And Zara, go ahead and roll your stealth. I replace uh, Avendasora on the door. <laughs> <laughs> 17. 11. All right. So, uh, Zara, you're able to sneak around and just sort of slide in the shadows of this room since it's not that well lit. Um, and you're able to get towards the back of the room with a uh, fairly easy with ease, I'll put it that way. <laughs> um, so you're you're kind of hidden away pretty well. Uh, Waggle, uh, so based off of your role, when you get closer to the center, um, just sort of sensing what's going on in this room, it doesn't seem like the decay is coming specifically from something in this room. Uh, and it sort of occurs to you, this is like one of the first living things you have seen in this mansion since you got here. And it just seems like Whatever is happening here just slowly kills living things that are within it. Uh, and it's just sort of focused at the center of this room, and it's just slowly pulling the energy from the rest of them. That's creepy. When you say this room's got vegetation, is it just, is it like a couple of plants hanging from the ceiling? Is it a greenhouse, or is it like this is a forest inside this Oh, room? yeah. Think more like a greenhouse. Okay. Uh, Mouser is going to be puzzled by the, he doesn't care about the the like the the death that's over there but he's puzzled by the door but he would like to sit down in kind of the greenery and he's going to hold uh the dismembered hand and he's going <laughs> to take the palm of it and place it against the side of his face and like <laughs> kind of like a caress like uh like like a an affectionate person would caress the side of his cheek are you petting yourself right now with Zachariah's severed arm? <laughs> he's pretending that it's somebody else. He's like, he's like, what, what would this feel like? Are you soothing yourself right now? <laughs> sure, yeah. Okay. Mouse, Mouse is more complicated than you guys think. <laughs> oh, it's like, who is that someone else? At? Okay. Mm-hmm. Aw. Mm-hmm. That's, right, that's pretty sweet. I'd like to look around the room some more, I guess, and see if we can find any statues. For that one, just go ahead and roll a straight-up investigation check. Okay. Uh, 16. Damn, man. You guys' investigation checks have been fucking killing it all night. And I'm looking at Mouser, and he has a negative one, so I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It'll expedite us to, to more important stuff, I suppose. I'm Garrett is trying to recuse Mouser from the brain stuff because he's you know like dumb and he wouldn't care so as you move around this room um you're sort of looking at things you're, you're looking for a statue you know there's the fourth piece to the puzzle somewhere uh in this mansion and you're just taking in all this greenery and because you're a druid you just so happen to notice that uh there's a shadow along the wall that seems to be moving and it kind of clicks for you that's zara because uh, you saw her sneak past you and uh, she moves past uh the largest plant in this particular room um, which seems to be housed in uh, some weird potted plant um and it, it doesn't look like something that you've seen before. And as you get closer to it, it looks like it has some sort of like elongated neck. And when you get up close to it, it actually looks like it has a mouth that's open. And that is what these flowers have been uh, placed into. Uh, and then as you look closer to the ground, you can see what appears to be like a set of shoulders that are uh, more rounded than the rest of the bust that you have seen. And you realize that you're actually looking at some sort of creature that you can you can bet, you know, lives in the water. Uh, and it seems to be that the flower that's inside this statue is healthier than everything else in this room. All right, I guess I pick it up. All right, this is the heaviest of the statues that you have picked up, and it has this long neck, like I mentioned, so when you pick it up, it almost looks like you're holding, like, a giraffe. Um, and then as you get it closer to you, you can see there's more intricate detail on this, and there's, like, scales. It almost looks like this is some sort of a reptile or, you know, <laughs> one of those weird things you've heard of that's like a dinosaur. Um <laughs> I'm debating I like if I want to just straight up call this thing Nessie or not. I like shake off the whatever excess is on it and I hold it up and I'm like, and I make chimpanzee noises like, hey, I got it. I can't speak with animals. I forgot I had that. <laughs> so I couldn't understand what you say. I'm so glad I gave you spell slots back for that. <laughs> Amazing. So you hold this thing up and uh, I'll just go ahead and say that the flower, I literally had to Google fucking flowers, is just this massive sunflower that's coming from its mouth. Uh, when you hold it up, it seems to just sort of fall out. Uh, when it does, it's odd because it seems like the stem is wet as if there has been water that's been held within this thing's long neck. The other thing is it lands in the center of this room where the decay is and as soon as it touches, it turns from lush green to yellow to brown and to black and all the petals just sort of fall off and turn to ash. Oh, well, I avoid that part. I no longer stand in that area. Yeah, I step out of this. <laughs> all right, let's go. 
Nailed it. Uh, as like the party is leaving the conservatory, uh, Mouser like he kind of like jumps and he's like, "Oh, I didn't know that people were still like here." And he put he stashes the hand back away in his pack or whatever. I like this character growth. Like this is mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. All right, are we gonna have another uh, alley oop style uh, placing of the statue? Or are we gonna do this just sort of traditional? And now I'll just do it traditionally. No, no, monkey, we go, we go all the way. I pick up, <laughs> I pick up Brendan and throw Brendan, <laughs> who's holding the bus. <laughs> all right, that's strength check. Oh, we can go with athletics. Use your athletics for that. Uh, fourteen plus six, twenty, dirty nice. twenty. <laughs> yeah, so you shapeshift, become Brendan again, right? Uh, when that happens, you're just like just gonna take this thing up there and set it down, and just you feel these Goliath hands grab you, these half orc hands, and just chuck you up there. And at first, you're freaked the fuck out until your feet just sort of land perfectly on this pedestal, or excuse me, at the top of the statue. And you're just like, okay, I guess that's one way to do it. <laughs> Before it was basketball, this time it was football. You know, like it was like <laughs> go long. <laughs> It's a perfect throw. Could spiral to Brendan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just have a halfling spiraling through the air until they land on the statue. Dump the <laughs> bust. <laughs> All right. All I put right. the bust on. Uh, as you uh, slowly slide the bust down, um, you hear the noise again, and you see the fourth candle light up. Um, and as you all are standing there, uh, you notice something kind of odd at the center of the chandelier, at a spot where there's actually no lights and no candles, uh, just like the very tip of it. Uh, it seems to be, it's like the opposite of glowing. It's like drinking in the light that's around it. And it, it just seems like there's a shadow that is slowly emerging from the chandelier itself. And uh, as you're just sort of getting a little bit nervous about what you're looking at, uh, there's a shattering. And you hear something and you just see what appears to be another key that's falling from the chandelier except this one as opposed to the shiny blue one uh, that Justonian received this one is like black and it's like it drinks in the light um, when it hits the ground unless someone wants to try and catch it it's up to you guys oh yeah I definitely like will go for that all right just straight up athletics for that athletics my forte so that's a two <laughs> <laughs> You hold your hands up. My forte. Like you, you cup your hands and you're like watching it come down. Uh, and everyone else sees this scene. Uh, it falls perfectly like it's going to land between your hands. And it, you, somehow there was enough space for it to fall right between your hands. Not only does it hit the ground and clatter, but you're still looking up, like waiting for it to come <laughs> oh, down. No. And it's just yeah, at your feet. That's too real. Brings you back. <laughs> <laughs> everyone else uh, that noticed this thing fall to the ground, uh, you notice that it seems to be like. They look like stone. They look like some sort of actual physical object. This one seems to be some sort of black stone, maybe onyx or obsidian. No one really knows, um, and no one ever will. But it's also pulsating uh, the same way the first one did. Sounds hot. <laughs> Waggle, you're going to pick it up? I'm going to slowly climb down from the statue. I'm like too oh, far yeah, away. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I meant to you know, make sure, see what happens with the ground first before picking it up. So Yeah. I, I do that. Sweet catch, baseball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. First pick. First Waggle, pick. as you pick this up, uh, you just sort of feel, like, warm. Like, I don't know if anyone's ever had a shot, like, right before you had, like, an x-ray or something like that where you can actually, like, feel the stuff go through you. Like, I had something done to me before where they gave me a shot, and they're like, your armpits are going to feel really warm. You're going to feel like you peed yourself. And I was just yeah. like, uh, okay. And they gave me the shot, and I was like, holy shit, they weren't lying. Um, <laughs> it's kind of really like... I liked it. <laughs> it was weird for me because like they didn't tell me my mouth would taste weird uh so when that happened i was like what the fuck is happening to me what did they give me did they give me the wrong stuff but <laughs> is that the is a barium that they do that with i was gonna say i'll defer to the doctors because i have no idea what i was injected with probably gadolinium but i don't know probably gad yeah uh, I think well, he said uh, heroin, but I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> you had a you had a good doctor. <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> the doctor is about to operate. <laughs> but yeah, you feel this go through you, but it, it doesn't feel like it's hurting you. You almost feel like energized, but in a way that kind of turns your stomach. Um, so you're going to go ahead and take ten temporary hit points and add them to your total. Um, you oh, also yeah. feel like uh, if you were to touch someone while you're holding this, you could probably. You know, in some way, shape, or form, do what you just saw in the conservatory, where you take the life holy shit from someone. But I guess you're gonna have to wait to find out what that's like. Hey, Brendan, come over here. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> you also now have insight into the fact that Justonian, wherever he is, uh, probably had something similar 
uh, when he got his key. Mm. But what does the blue key do? We gotta get more keys, guys. Let me tell you something about these keys. We gotta get more. <laughs> where, oh boy. <laughs> where are these where are these uh Kelmeroys where guys? Where do they go? The McElroys. Right when you McElroys. say that you hear footsteps approaching from the billiard room. Uh, and you see Clintonian and Griffin. Uh, and they seem just genuinely curious and they notice that you're holding another key. Uh, mm. and Clintonian says, My God, he's found one. And he approaches, mm-hmm. not like he's going to snatch it, but he just seems to be, like, worried, but also kind of impressed. I, it's clear he's very much underestimated the four of you. Um, and he looks towards Griffin. And he says, we're going to have to figure something out because we can't all leave this place, but I don't know what we're going to do. I just, I can't lose the three of you. And as he says Aww. that, Aww. lightning flickers in the background and thunder crackles overhead and the lights dim and you hear a whooshing sound and you see this horror as soon as the lights come up on Clintonian's face um, and he just runs off and he says I have to find them and Griffin's just sort of standing there like kind of concerned but not as freaked out as Clintonian and he says uh okay I'll wait in the library I guess tell them I said hi <laughs> Uh, everyone roll perception checks. Oh, God. Actually, I'm going to have you guys do two. Perception checks and insight checks. All right. My perception was 17 and my insight was four. <laughs> Mouser perception 13, <laughs> insight six. Waggles perception 20 and insight seven. There's something wrong with my dice, but my perception is 26 and my insight <laughs> is 17. Jeez. Okay, so... Waggle and Brendan, uh, what you notice through your perception check as you're sort of taking in the scene around you uh, is that Griffin looks like he's concerned. You can tell that he's just not a panicker, but as he walks into that library, he looks calm and he almost looks healthier than he was when he got here. It's like, you know, when they say a pregnant woman's glowing, uh, it just seems like that's what's happening with him. Uh, For insight checks, however, uh, Brendan's the only one that picks up on this. Um, the lights flickered and you've seen it happen multiple times and each time it seems to be the count moving through the house Uh, and he tends to do this to send a message uh, or to carry away someone's body Uh, and it sort of makes sense to you why Clintonian just ran off when the lights flickered and it also occurs to you that the lights flickered earlier and you guys have no idea why Mm -hmm. Mm, okay it's like the cannons at the end of the day in the Hunger Games. Uh, Actually, no, the cannons die. happen as soon as they die. It's like the cannons in the Hunger Games. <laughs> exactly oh, like them. <laughs> oh, geez. Uh, can I can I call out to Griffin? It's like, uh, He's like right in front of us, isn't he? Yeah, you guys are in the middle of the yeah. hallway and you can just totally see him through the double doors uh, in the library. Excuse me. Good sir. Mr. McElroy... Hang on. I got to look up all of Griffin's nicknames really fast because he has 30 under 30 media luminary. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, me. 30 under 30 media luminary Griffin McElroy. Yes. um, Where are your brothers? Um, I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but Traviston and Justonian uh, split off so that they could go find another key. And we haven't heard from them since, but I, I trust them to get the job done. I am slightly concerned, but uh, I know that there was still three of those mercenaries left, and uh, they could be the reason the lights are flickering, I suppose. Two of those mercenaries. Oh. You notice he feels, like, legitimately uncomfortable after you made that? Like, you're almost trying... He he suspects you're the ones that killed the other one now. Oh, God. Why? <laughs> and I drop oh, the hand. You're literally holding <laughs> oh, the fucking no. arm. Oh, no! Oh, <laughs> no! <laughs> So Griffin, Griffin, he's by himself. Should we just like take this guy out? <laughs> I, I mean, so, okay. So, uh, out of out of character, I was thinking that I'm like, is there any reason? Because I mean, we're kind of battling against them in a de- like to to a degree, but yeah. Also, not really. They're they're <laughs> just as much fodder to get in the way for a for a you know uh, a skeleton golem as much as we are to fight. Are we all having this conversation right in front of him? Mm-hmm. I think no, you're I think all looking at each other. I like to interpret this or, as yeah. you're all like looking at each other like super wide eyes, like looking or at him and much. looking at each other and like all like grabbing your fucking weapons <laughs> okay. and shit. 
Yeah. Uh, Waggle definitely has finger guns out right now. <laughs> like yeah, they're, like, they're just not like even coming there. out of his pockets, you know. <laughs> yeah, you're like just doing this, uh, Mister Thirty Under Thirty Luminary. Do you think maybe you would like to hand over that key that you have on you? We can do this peacefully. Do we need all the keys? Mouser is legit going to be like, do we need all the keys at once? Do we need all the keys? Griffin is uh, sort of like walking along the stacks and he's just sort of looking at books and you know, he'll, he'll pull one every now and then to look at it and he'll put it back. Uh, and in response to the first question about handing over the key, uh, he looks at you and he says, my, you're quite perceptive, aren't you? The answer to that is no, I would not like to hand it over, but I suppose the four of you could take it from me. Uh, what I will suggest is find the other key and then worry about this one. I have it fairly safe and I have no intention of attacking anyone here. And he keeps walking, he keeps checking these books, and he seems like he's not really concerned about the veiled threat you guys just made. He's very curious about this library. The last keys in the library. So do we kill him? Do we kill him right now, guys? Uh, just looks back and like, I would prefer uh, not. Hold and, uh, on. In that Brendan moment, also would prefer not to kill people. He stops in front of Zoltan uh, after he uh, says, I prefer not. Uh, mm-hmm. And he looks at it and he says, you're quite the character, aren't you? And in response, Zoltan says, I am here for your assistance. And he seems genuinely surprised and he like looks at the four of you and he's like, did anyone try asking it questions, perhaps? Or was everyone obsessed with finding a coin slot, perhaps? We would <laughs> coin slot. Shut up. I, uh, <laughs> I was concerned with the wolf on the ground. Ah, uh, yes, I seem to recall that. And he turns back and he says, If you don't mind, I would like to ask a few private questions to Zoltan, and uh, you can come kill me after that, I suppose. What the hell? <laughs> the funny thing about trying to persuade I mean, players is I can't roll and tell you guys you have to do what I say. I just have to do it. <laughs> no, no. Well, there's four of us and one of you. How about you ask your questions with us standing right here? All right. And, no, I don't know what fucking <laughs> what? accent that was. Why is he British all of a sudden? <laughs> all right, oi! Uh, he says, all right. And he turns back to Zoltan and he says... What is wrong with this library? And Zoltan uh, replies, You must not look for what is here, but instead look for what is not. What is not here? I ask Zoltan. You must not look for what is here, but you must find what is not. And Griffin says, There seems to be a limit to this being's knowledge. It's almost like it's here to help us, but it can't quite do it for us. Okay, do we have to, like, Dewey Decimal this shindig? Like, what, uh... He's just is... pulling books at this point and just sort of looking through them, and as you sort of look around, you realize there's thousands of books in this room. Is there an obvious order to the books? Like, are they alphabetical, or do they seem to be grouped by topic? Do you ask that out loud, or are you asking me, the DM? I'm asking the DM, and, and Waggle will start asking. Also... You said that, that Griffin is, like, glowing like he's pregnant, right? He's like that. Got that. Is, is Waggle also glowing like he's pregnant? You have a different... That's an excellent question. I'm so glad you asked that. You kind of, like, catch your reflection in these windows as you walk past. Yeah. Uh, you have a different sort of aura around you. It's like looking in your reflection, you'd say you almost look dangerous. Like, not in a hot mm, leather okay. jacket smoking kind of way. Oh. Like, okay. the oh. guy in the alley that's staring at you as you walk by him kind of way. Like, you see oh, him... <laughs> Does, does, Waggle put on, does Waggle put on lipstick and then tuck his <laughs> tuck his wiener underneath going. the skin he's wearing? <laughs> he looks yeah, like it would be more appropriate to carry around uh, Zachariah's arm with this aura around him at this point. <laughs> oh man, can we trade keys? I mean, what do you care, man? <laughs> the trading sucks. keys is a hilarious proposition. I did not expect. <laughs> but yeah, and I think Waggle will start investigating the order of books. Okay. Mouser's getting bored. He's he's getting back into the uh, circling around the room and getting like antsy. He wants he needs to he needs to do something productive slash destructive. 
so as this is happening and you're you're clearly like getting riled up uh griffin starts taking more and more notice of this um and he's going to you know what i'm gonna roll a d4 on this mm-hmm. oh that's for one of the four of us or each of the four of us all right he walks over to zara because you're the fourth person on my discord screen <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and he says, you seem to have your wits about you, so I'm going to level with you. I don't think anyone's making it out of here. And whether or not you kill me now or the Count kills me later doesn't really matter to me, but it seems like there might be a key to our salvation, so to speak, hidden within this room. I don't think it's an actual key, which is why I'm telling you and not your friend Mouser, who would not be able to distinguish between a figurative and a literal key. And as he says literal key, he reaches into his coat pocket and he produces the key that the Count had given to Justonian. And he says, I lifted this off my brother almost as soon as he received it, and no one else seems to notice. But uh, I suppose if I give this to you, You'll let me spend a little bit more time trying to figure out how we might all survive this. And he just presses it down into your toe beans. Oh. Toe beans? Because you're a cat. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I was like, my toe beans. Okay, got it. (laughs) Got it. So now I get to glow like I'm pregnant. Yes, as uh, (laughs) soon as this touches your hand, um, you don't have any wounds, I don't think, correct? Uh, no. All right, so uh, you just feel more energetic and and filled with life. Uh, You're actually going to roll advantage on all perception and insight checks as long as you have this in your possession. As long as you have this in your possession, uh, because the best way I can describe it, and I'm not really trying to push people to watch the Wheel of Time show or read the books or listen to twats of twats. It's like when you're holding the magic in Wheel of Time, where the world just seems brighter and you can see like every blade of grass and hear the fluttering of every bee's wings that passes by you. It's just like you're more in tune with the world. Uh, in All addition right. to that, you're fairly certain that uh, you might have a charge or two that could, say, heal someone if they get into a really bad spot. Okay. It's fantasy so heroin. Fancy. And as soon as he um. passes the key off to you, uh, you see that glow kind of fade from him. Um, and it's weird. It's like as this glow leaves him, you see his face, and it's not like his expression changed. Um, you can see sincere sadness on his face when he hands it to you. It doesn't seem like he's frightened of you guys. There just seems to be something he knows about this place uh, that is upsetting him in a way that you can't quite understand yet. Did he feel one of his brothers die? Because he can feel everything in the world. Uh, I would tell you to roll a perception check, but you know, fuck it. Roll a perception check. If you crit, I'll tell you. All right. <laughs> but is, I get advantage, right? You do. <laughs> yeah. Man, wow. That's a hell of a, that was also a hell of a question, too. Oh, but I... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> one's a 15, one's a 13, but my perception, I add three, and my insight, I add no, it had no, to be like a uh, 20. Yeah. You were going to have oh, to yeah, shit no, on it to, to know happening. your exact question. With that high of a roll, because it's 18, right? It's 15 plus 3? Yeah. With that high of a roll, I will say, because he passed this off to you, there's some sort of like resonance, like an empathy that came along with it. Uh, and there is something that tells you either he, his father, or someone in his family has been here before. What? This is not a random place that they were summoned to. What? Like. There is history with the McElroys and this mansion. And something about that makes him as sad as possible. Okay. Like, let me replace that. Ashamed. Oh. Because his dad survived. Because he got out, right? It's gotta be. Motherfucker. Adam, you just gave me chills, dude. I know. I was like, ooh. 